Hello guys, Megijabe here. As you can see on the title, in this video I will discuss about Honkai Star Rail, a new release gacha game that a lot of players are trying out right now to see if this game is for them. This is my first impression on the game, so it will mostly be a commentary on the game, story, gameplay, etc. as far as I experienced with the game on day 1. Before I start, I just want to warn you that this video may contain some spoilers of the story, so I do recommend watching this video after you have done the tutorial or the main story if you are playing this game. If you don't really mind the spoilers, then you can watch this video. Short about Star Rail is that it's a space RPG turn-based game with gacha involved. If you have played any turn-based game like Epic 7 or even Slime is Kind Memories, then you pretty much know how it works. It is a single player so there are no co-ops or leaderboard in this game, so you can pretty much play this game at your own pace and enjoy. On day 1, I learned a lot of new stuff in Star Rail while playing the tutorial because I never had the chance to play the beta when they announced it. So everything was new for me. Unlike Genshin Impact, it has a limitation on what you can explore, so it is not a big open world. The tutorial is easy to follow and you will learn quickly while you progress. So make sure to read while you can because there is a lot of stuff that you need to know. Early on, you will meet two interesting characters, March 7 and Dong Huang. Hang. Don Huang. Dong Huang. I hope I pronounced it right. I'm really bad at uh, saying names. But they are going to be your companion during your progress. They are the three units that you will get early into the game. So, and so far, they are really useful. March 7 is a support that can put a shield on you. And Dong Huang is a damage dealer. Your own character is also a damage dealer. And in this game, you will also notice that there are elements and classes. For the elements, there are physical, ice, wind, fire, lightning, quantum, and imaginary. They all have different effects. For example, when you use a fire attack, you will deal fire damage and also apply a burn effect, which will deal damage per dot. In this game, the elements are really important when you do your battle because the mobs have a shield type, or in this game, they call it toughness. If you hit the mobs with the corresponding elements, you will be able to break the toughness faster. Just like Sword Online in the Gold Factor, you want to use the element type of the boss weakness when you reach higher endgame content. In Star Rail, we have 7 different classes, Destruction, The Hunt, The Erudition, Harmony, Nility, Preservation, and Abundance. And so far, what I know is that the Hunt are single target DPS, Harmony are the buffer, uh, Preservation are the tank, and Abundance are the healer. And the rest, Destruction, Nility, Erudition, I'm not sure what they are, but they are, they are classes. Since it is a turn based game, the battle will determine your unit speed and the enemy speed. But in Star Wheel, if you attack the enemy first in the open world, you will start first. If the enemy ambush you, then they will start. So far, the gameplay is really good and really easy to understand since I have played many different turn-based games before and I'm currently also doing it right now. Each unit has a really cool ultimate animation, but the only thing I really wish for is that we are able to skip the animation so we can get a faster battle. Of course, they do have an auto-battle system, which almost all turn-based games have, and that means that I can do something else, but meanwhile, the auto is doing the battle for me. When it comes to characters, there are 21 units that are playable right now. Some you do get for free from like story or events, and some are limited in gacha. So far, I really like Harta. She is an erudition that can deal damage, and why I like her is her design 
and her playstyle. She, ha she has a passive where she can deal damage if one of your units makes the enemy go lower than 50 HP. So that's an uh, extra turn for her, which is really nice. When it comes to Gacha, it is no different from Genjin. They have the same system, 9 pulls to get a 5 star, with a soft pity, and summon cost the same. But the best thing with Star Wheel is that you have a chance to get a guaranteed 5 star on the beginner banner when you have done your 50 summons on, on it, which is really nice of the game. And on the stand banner, you are able to choose any 5 star standard unit after you have done your 300 pulls. This is only one time, but it is a really nice system since you can choose to get a new 5 star that you don't have or yet another copy to unlock another constellation, or in this game we call it Adolons. My first 5 star that I got from the beginner banner was Clara, and I still trying to figure out how she works and what team she can be good on, so I can't really say if she is good or not, but if you know, let me know in the comments how she works and what team she can be great on, but so far, uh, I know that she likes to get hit, like you want the enemy to hit her so she can do a counter-attack. So she is like counter-attack units, so that's good to know, I guess. The story in Star Wheel, I really enjoy it, I read it, I follow it, the voice acting is perfect for the, each character. Uh, especially during the tutorial, it does caught my attention to it so I started to listen and read and yeah really really good good job uh, Hollywood and yeah um, it does really want to make you to continue with the story but some are locked behind the uh, on your level your level is trailblaze uh, in this game which is equivalent to adventure ranked in Genshin but which, which is good they don't want to rush the story or uh, rush the content they uh, provide because the g game is still new and they want to take to take it slowly and yeah uh, so far really really good story they do have a side quest which also involves some stories but so far they're kind of boring not really interested so i rushed them to make sure to able to get my trailblaze exp and my reward uh, but I hope they'd introduce more side quests that have some interesting story. Like uh, in Inazuma, they had really really dark uh, story, and now Sumeru, they have they have the I got I forgot the quest Arananya. Uh, those uh, quests was really good as well. So I hope in the future they release a better side story. Will I continue playing this game? Um, for now, it's kind of hard to tell if I want to continue playing the game since I do have Genshin that I, that I play casual daily and slam like game memory. And also, the game is pretty new, so I will give it a try like I did for Tower Fantasy. I gave it like three month uh, trial, which then I dropped later on, but came back for the other stuff when they drop something good or something interesting, who knows? Uh, maybe a new story, but we'll see. But so far, right now, I will keep going, uh, playing the game for a story, till I get bored or need a break uh, from it. Because playing many gacha games is not really healthy, trust me. So, that is my first impression on the game on day one. I maybe will do more content video on Star Wheel, but we'll see. But so far, it is really good game, not gonna lie. If you haven't tried the game yet, I will recommend doing it if you are interested in turn-based game and the story. And I think that is for me. Thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed my commentary on the Honkai Star Rail. And I will see you guys on the next video. So take care and bye bye.